All right, guys, so I just wanted to cover a few things, and I'll, I'll try to be brief, but that rarely works out, um, about what we were talking about yesterday. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is pitch, gauge, and, and drive links. And I always have trouble figuring out which is pitch and which is gauge. And I suppose in time it just comes to you, but what I was thinking about last night was if you just, if you just look at your saw, um, and if you just imagine an arrow pointing over the guide bar there and, uh, and just say pitch, you know, picture an arrow with the word pitch going that way because you're measuring between the rivets. The pitch is three rivets divided by two. And then for gauge, just imagine an arrow going, you know, across the guide bar and it's the thickness of, of the, um, the drive link that goes into the guide bar. So there's your pitch. Three rivets divided by two, your gauge, the thickness of the piece that goes into the guide bar. And while we're talking about pitch, I, I totally messed up this tool. Where are we? Uh, so the way you use this tool, I found a really nice video, which I put under yesterday's video, and I'll put under today's video by Oregon. It's like five minutes long, and it shows you, you know, how to use this tool. And I, I always thought I was more of the uh, direction reading type, but apparently I sometimes think I know what I'm doing and I don't. So there's a lesson there somewhere. But uh, the way you use this tool for a 3 8 inch pitch chain, you don't measure like this, like I was doing yesterday. You actually want to center the rivets on the, um, let's put this where it's going to be, not in the way of the camera. You want to center the rivets in the notches and you see how on 3 8 you see how centered they are? So, you know, that's a 3 8 inch pitch chain. A 404, um, they're not centered. I mean, the difference isn't huge. You know, 325, you know, they're definitely not centered. 325 is much shorter. So a quarter inch, I mean, is a, is a much shorter uh, pitch. So just, just so you guys know that, um, you know, the way you use this tool is you just take any three rivets and you center them and that'll tell you the pitch. And drive links, uh, that's another one that, you know, just for fun, um, let's see if we get you guys in focus a little bit better. Uh, just for fun, you know, all you need to do is lay your chain out and I've noticed if I start with two, am I in focus over here? I'm barely in focus. But if you put two drive links together, um, it's very easy to count because you can just go by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two, four, six, eight, 30, two, four, six, eight, 40, two, four, and there's one for the five. And there are 45 drive links on the Husqvarna. Um, the only difference is up here this chain, which, which you guys can barely see, um, I've got, this is a 72 drive link chain, and if you lay them out and line them up, you'll have two at the end here, and you can't really see it well, but there's two at the end. There's two at the end over here. Uh, start with two on the end, on one end, and then you'll either have one or two on the, on the other end, and then you can just count by twos. My plan for this tree is first I'm gonna go in and, and just clean up you know, some of the loose branches, but I'm not gonna cut anything that's touching the ground and, and holding it in place. Uh, I'm gonna be really careful about that because I don't want this thing to fall. Uh, even when I'm working, I'm not gonna put my body above a branch where if it does come up, it's gonna whack me in the face. I'm gonna keep the saw away from me so if it does come up and the saw gets kicked, the saw doesn't hit me in the face. Uh, I'm never gonna get on a ladder with a chainsaw because that's just <laughs> unless you do it for a living. Um, but once we clean up the brush around the base of it, tie it to the playset with a tight knot but with a pull, a pull loop on it so I can um, cut the branches that are actually holding it way up, release the knot, and then pray that the branch comes down slowly. 
you know, it, it probably won't, it'll probably just drop, that's fine. I, I just prefer it to drop when I'm not under it. Today I'm going to be using the T535i and I've got a brand new Oregon uh, advanced cut chain on it. So this is what a Oregon advanced cut chain looks like out of the box. Um, and then for you guys uh, new to chainsaws, chainsaws are so dangerous in so many ways. Watch the manufacturer's videos on chainsaw safety. It'll be the best time you ever spent. Like I'm doing this because I've used a chainsaw for 20 years now and I kind of sort of have an idea of what's going to happen. We'll see what the video says, but um, there's nothing wrong with calling somebody. You know, an arborist would be more than happy to, to take care of this. I assure you, if you call an arborist and say, you know, I got this branch, I feel like I could do it, but you know, I, I think you, you probably know more about this. They'll be more than happy to take care of it. Oh, you'd be proud if you're smart enough to call somebody to do something like this because you don't want to be telling the story about you know why there's that big scar on your leg and why you walk with a limp for the rest of your life god i'm scaring myself so i'm gonna go put every piece of ppe on i have uh do not try this at home do not think i know what i'm doing um yeah so this video is for entertainment only have we said that yet Okay guys, if you look right here, right at the base of the swing set of the branch to the left, there's a whole bunch of branches under tension there. The second I cut one of those branches, they're gonna snap open, the tree's gonna fall, and a lot of stuff is gonna happen real quickly. So I don't wanna be there when that happens. So I'm gonna take my pole saw First, I'm gonna give a few tugs on the top of the branch and see if I can loosen it that way. And then if that doesn't work, I'll use the pole saw to cut some of those branches under tension there. Let's see how that goes. All right, so I pulled it and the tree is still stuck up there pretty good. And it's probably because of my rope. So from a careful distance, I'm gonna see if I can cut some of those branches near the bottom. At some point, I anticipate it's just gonna snap right up. I just wanna make sure I'm nowhere near when that happens. Okay, so that last branch I cut made the, the limb completely loose. So the, the rope is actually what's holding it up now. I really wish I had a second person, one to guide it with a pole saw and one to lower the rope, but we'll lower the rope and see what happens. All right, I gotta admit that I didn't see that happening. They both went up. I got one resting on the fence, so I'm gonna see if I, if I can cut that first on top, like a third of the way through, then from the bottom. So as it falls, the, the cut opens up. And uh, I gotta be careful, because once it starts coming, it may keep coming. And then the other one, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen with that. 
Hopefully it'll slowly come down, but I'm gonna stay far away from the other one. All right, now I'll lower the rope a little bit more and that branch may just slide right out. It was being held by the rope. So when I made the first cut, it, it, it fell a few inches, but it didn't want to fall all the way. All right, so since I took the weight off of the end, it doesn't have enough mass to make it go down. So I'm gonna see if I can just take my pole here and pull the end down and it, hopefully it'll just kind of slide out of there. All right, now I'm gonna very carefully see if I can lighten the weight of both branches, but I gotta watch out because the bigger branch, the one on the right, looks like the way that's gonna come down is to just slide towards the smaller one. So uh, I'll, I'll, you know, cut some stuff off, keep an eye on that branch to the right, and, uh, you know, just not put myself in harm's way, for lack of a better term. You know, always keep an eye on the branch and know where to go. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so I got all the smaller stuff uh, cleaned up. I did have one branch snap back pretty good. I mean, it only got within about 18 inches of my face, but there was on pressure on it. I cut it and it, it opened up. So it was a bit of an adrenaline rush. It didn't come anywhere close. But what I want to do now is grab my pole and see if I can just slide the bottom of the branch to the left so it, it falls out cut it up into smaller pieces, and uh, then we'll hit the next one. I don't wanna just start cutting on the one to the left because it's a fairly steep angle and it's gonna drop and I don't know how it's gonna react. So let's see how that goes. All right, so that should give me enough room to cut this, this branch on the left and be able to be out of the way when it falls. And it's gonna start getting a lot lighter now as well. All right, so now what I want to do is get this big piece here to just slide right off the playset. So I think I'm going to start on this side and use the pole saw to push it that way 
If that doesn't work, I'll, I'll see if I can push it from the back. And I guess last resort, I could pull it, but I don't want to really pull it towards me. But I think it's going to slide unless it gets caught up there on something. I think it's going to slide okay. But let's see what happens. So something like that, that's what I was going for. I'm just gonna zip the last few branches here and, and take this stuff to the dump. It's really not about cleaning the brush up as much as just getting it all off the playset and you know I can clean it up at my leisure now. I just didn't want to leave that hazard in the yard. For this last bit, I'll run the saw on full throttle. You know, it's got eco mode, which is a lower power level and regular mode, I'll run it on regular mode just so you guys can get a feel for what this saw can do. And you know, I'll cut it up into manageable pieces, but I'm telling you guys, these battery saws do a nice job. Alright guys, I think we pretty much got the uh, the branches cleaned up off of the playset here. Uh, I haven't looked too hard yet, but I think the playset ended up okay out of this. Um, I'm going to need a jack or something to get these branches out. I might have to like screw a piece of wood to them and then use a jack. They're, uh, they're really, really well in there. But, um, you know, I, I got all of the brush in the truck so I'll take that to the dump and then at some point you know I can come by and cut this and just leave a pile for for next year but um, I guess that's pretty much it I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna leave this log here um, I cut this log here on um, regular mode with the saw so if you want to see what this saw does with uh, it's a 12 inch bar it's the 5.2 amp hour battery um, and let's see how much charge we got left in her so after all that cutting we have three bars left on the saw um, but if you want to get an idea of what the saw is capable of you know, I wouldn't really get much bigger than this, you know, uh, all the time. I mean, honestly, I, I probably, if I was cutting stuff like this all day, I'd get a gasser. But for something like this where you get to the bigger stuff, you know, not a big deal. Uh, I like the Oregon Advance cut. I, I think it cut really nicely. Um, let me show you the box on that. Oregon Advance cut. 12-inch uh, bar. Uh, 043 gauge. 3 eighths pitch, 45 drive links. Um, cut really nice, really smooth. Um, one thing I tend to do is I, I lower my depth gauges, uh, sometimes a little bit too much, and I really need to, to knock that off because the saw gets very grabby. Uh, so with the new chain, it, um, you know, it was cutting smooth and it was cutting fast. So, um, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of Oregon chain. Um, 
I, I feel like the chain is actually a little bit softer than maybe some of the other brands, but I like it to be softer, you know, the, the metal where you file, because uh, I'm a hand filer, so I, I don't really want to fight with it. Um, but that could just be my, you know, my feeling about it. But um, I think we're going to call it a day, guys. I'll take the wood to the dump and clean this up, but you don't need to watch me. Uh, you don't need to watch me cut all this wood. And um, I really don't know if I'm going to, how much of this I'm going to show because I, I don't want, I don't want anybody to get ideas to do this if they're unsure, you know. Th there was one point where a branch snapped back at me. Uh, it was a good 18 inches away, but I had a nice adrenaline rush and things could have gone south quickly. So, um, you know, guys, again, there's nothing wrong with, uh, nothing wrong with calling an arborist uh, to do something like this and, and even asking them, you know, if they can just get it on the ground for you. Um, in my opinion. All right, guys, I will give you a recording of me cutting this log. It's going to probably be uh, long and slow, but if you want an idea of what the Husqvarna is capable of, uh, watch that clip. Thanks, guys. Take care.